Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be learning something really cool. How to make a collapsible accordion menu using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The finished result will look something like this. So as we can see, we just have a couple little collapsible items here. We can click on one, click on another, click on another, and just close them up by clicking. Pretty simple thing, fun to make. You can use it for a lot of different things. Frequently asked questions, sections, menus, all kinds of cool stuff you could put on your website. Let's get started, shall we? So back over here in CodePen, we are going to get started by just writing some basic HTML. So the wonderful thing about CodePen is we don't need to make any doc type declarations or head tags or HTML tags, any of that. So we can just jump right into the body of our content here. So let's make a collapsible accordion. There's going to be our header and we're going to make our first item here by starting out with a button. And we're going to give this a class of collapsible. And close that up and we're going to say open section one. And there's our first button right underneath. Underneath this, we're going to make our content. So we're going to say div class equals content. And right in here, we're just going to put some lorem ipsum text in a paragraph tag. So let me go, let me go cop some lorem ipsum here. Copy this right on over. And just paste it right in there. And we're just going to copy that again and again. So we don't need to type it out. That would be silliness. But let's close up our uh, content div there. And right under here, we can make our next button. So again, we're going to say button class collapsible. And we'll say open section two. And there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this div here with all the text in it. They're all going to be the same. This div with class content and a little paragraph tag in them. So there we go. And we can make our next button here. This will be our final button. Button class collapsible. And this is going to be open section three. There we go. And we'll just drop our content right in there. And that's it for our HTML. So we'll just close up the body tag here. And we'll go ahead and get started styling. So we'll get to the fun part here. So to start off with our styles, the first thing that we're going to want to style is our collapsible, uh, our collapsible buttons here. So we're going to style the button that is used to open and close the collapsible content. So we're just going to go ahead and target the collapsible class there. And we'll set a background color to start. Nice dark gray. And I think I didn't target the first one correctly. There we go. A little, little typo there. There we go. Those typos, typos will get you for sure. We're just going to make the text color here white. We want cursor to be a pointer when we are hovered. We'll give it a little padding. Padding, not painting, padding. And we want to set the width here to 100% of our container. That'll look a bit better. And we just want to make sure that we have no border or outline. And we want our text to be, first of all, white. There we go. And we want that to line up to the left. So we'll say text align left. And there we go. Perfect. And then we'll set a little hover class for our collapsible. So when we hover it, we get a, a little color change. Nothing serious. We'll just say collapsible hover. Background color, uh, maybe just a, a lighter gray. 
There we go. Lighter gray, lighter gray. Oh, new period. There we go. There we are. So we got a nice little lighter gray. And right under here, we're going to add a symbol to each button to indicate whether the collapsible content is open or closed. So to do this, we're going to create a uh, pseudo element. We're going to use after to create a pseudo element. So pretty much after creates a pseudo element that is the last child of the selected element. So that'll pretty much look just like a little plus and minus sign, whether it's open or closed. Say collapsible after. And for the content, we're going to use the Unicode for, let's see, what's the Unicode for the plus and minus sign? We want 002B, backwards slash 002B. So that'll be the Unicode. And we want that to be white. And we want it to be a little bold. And we also want it on the right. So we're going to say float right. And there we go. So now, as we can see, we have our little plus sign there floated to the right. We're going to give it a little, little bit of margin left here, uh, about five picks. And there we go. And then right underneath this, we're going to make our minus sign. So to do that, we're going to target the active class. And we're just going to say in here, content, and then we're going to code for the minus sign, which is, let's see, 2212. 2212. Easy enough. There we go. So that's the Unicode for the minus sign. And now we're just going to style the collapsible content. So this part will be really easy. Um, we're going to make it hidden by default and show it with JavaScript. So let's say content padding 0 and 18 picks. So that should bring it in a little bit there. And in order to make it an animated collapsible, we're going to want to set a few properties here. We're going to set the max height to zero. We're going to set the overflow to hidden. And we'll add a transition. So very important if we want this to be smooth is to set a transition about 0 0.2 seconds and ease out. There we go. And we'll just set a little background color of white, if it's not already. Let's just make sure. There we go. All right, so all of our CSS is done now. So now we can do the fun part, hopping over to the JavaScript editor here. So in CodePen, another thing I love is you don't need to use script tags. You don't have to place these script tags in the body of your uh, page like you would with any regular HTML file. So just keep that in mind if you're working in a different editor or you know working with raw HTML files instead of a cool online code playground such as CodePen. So we're going to start by setting a variable and we'll call it call for collapsible. And then we will uh, target the class name so we'll get the element by their class name. So we do that by saying document.get elements by class name and in parentheses or a collapsible right there. We'll close that off with our semicolon here and then we'll make the i variable for our for loop here. And start with our little for loop. We're just going to say i equals zero. i is less than call dot length in increment by one. So to do that, we say i plus plus. Easy peasy. And then within our for loop, we can start by adding an event listener to determine when our function is going to when our function is going to execute. So we're going to say call i dot add event listener. And the event listener is going to be what what are we listening for? Well we're just listening for a little click. So 
So we're just going to put click in parentheses there. And we're going to leave that parentheses open, actually, because this is where we write our function. Now we're going to target the active class. I'm going to say this dot class list dot toggle active. And we can close that off with our semicolon here. And then we'll make another variable here for the content. And then we'll target that. We'll target its next sibling. So how do we do that? We'll say variable content equals this dot next element element sibling. Easy enough, right? Close that off with our semicolon. And in here we'll just write a quick if statement to determine the max height. So we'll say if content.style dot max height then content dot style dot max height equals null. So that means if we're not actively selected, then there is no max height. There is no height at all. So our, our else section of our statement will say else content dot style dot max height equals content dot scroll height. So the max height is equal to the scroll height plus px. So however many pixels. And then we'll just go ahead and close that up. Let's see, make sure all of these are closed properly. Let's open, close, open, close. Two down here. I need to close that parentheses that we opened a little while ago. And just put a little semicolon after that. And that should no, we have a typo in here somewhere. So let's try and hunt down this typo. It's right here in our for loop. Ah. I equals I equals what? I equals zero. Let's see if that was our typo. There we go. Perfect. So as we can see. Now we can open and close our collapsible accordion items. Pretty neat. So anyway, that's about all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. And uh, we're always putting out new videos. So stay tuned. Thanks.